Welcome, What's up guys, Crispy Cranky. We're back with another video. I say that every time and it gets kind of boring, but well actually it's not getting boring because I don't make that many videos. I mean, yeah, checkmate, yeah. Okay, anyways, today we're talking about Gears 5 and more specifically the, uh, the Horde mode and how there are different classes that have different uh, purchasable items. Like, example is how engineers cannot purchase weapons like Marcus can. And uh, there's only two NGs. No, I call it NGs, engineers, you know, NGs. But there's only two engineers in Gears 5 as of right now, and that is the, uh, that is Kat from Halo Reach, and that is also um, Dell, who is, you know, black guy, black guy Dell. He's also a, um, those are the only two as of right now. The Cat uh, has the Enforcer and the Railgun, while JD has Joe has the Enforcer and the Overkill Shotgun. So his his loadout is a little bit better, in my opinion, than Cat's. But so let's say you pick Engineer. You're you're on Wave One. You're on like a higher difficulty, really like a Master or you know Advanced. Anything but the beginning difficulty because that doesn't really matter. You don't really need an engineer at the beginning difficulties. And um, one of the most important things that you can do to help your engineer friends out is if you're a Marcus or anyone who can purchase a Lancer or already has a Lancer, retro or regular, or grenade launcher variant for that matter, trading, if the engineer offers to trade you one of their weapons for a Lancer, Please do it. It is definitely going to help out the engineer because they have no way to access that kind of weapon as it doesn't drop off of any enemies that you can kill. And the melee part of the Lancers, like the regular Lancer and the Retro Lancer, is super helpful for taking down robots or anything at close range. That would normally screw over an engineer because they simply cannot insta-kill it or they have to find a, a Nash or shotgun to take it out, which would be wasting ammo when you can just easily just melee down. Please help out your engineers by giving them a Lancer at the start of the game. I know that you probably, you probably don't want their trashy weapon, but in the long run, it'll help you both out because the engineer will keep that weapon throughout the entire game. So on wave one, what you wanna do, as soon as you guys place the fabricator in a strategically advantaged location, or just stick it in the middle, or whatever you plan on doing. First thing you wanna do is have your teammates and everybody just pitch in and throw their money that they start off with into the fabricator. That will allow the engineer, you usually want cat to buy, if you have a cat on your team, you want the cat to buy any of the fortifications as she is the only character that gets a 10% discount regarding uh, engineer purchases or anything else in the trader. But once everyone donates their uh, starter money to the Fabricator, they can actually place down a barricade on wave one. And this will help you with, you know, all the, the scions and stuff trying to drag you away and rip your head off. So strategic locations are mostly like, you know, they're your little hidey holes. Best, best places can usually be on either end of a spawn of a map. Like on each side, there's usually a spawn for enemies. And there's usually a pretty good spot to hang out over there. Solid. But my loadout for cats is, although I don't have any footage of me uh, picking that loadout, but my uh, personal loadout for cat, which is the character that I play the most, the best cards that you want for your engineer is root kit, flow, repair efficiency, top of the line, hologram lifetime which is cat exclusive. and definitely halo which is also a cat exclusive card halo is definitely one of the well is the best card for for cat of course i mean it has the highest highest rarity so I mean, that makes sense. but repair efficiency and root kit definitely help you out with generating your ultimate and saving your credits while uh repairing your machines which sentry guns run out of ammo very quickly so on boss waves, let's let's say you hit wave 10, and now there's a boss wave. I mean, of course there is. There's a boss wave every every 10 waves. But the uh, on the boss wave, 
you have two options as an engineer. You can either sit in your fortress and hold down the area and hopefully kill the boss before they enter it. Like, although that's dependent on the boss because, for example, the, uh, the guy that's a turret and just sits there, I forgot what his name is, but he's like a, he just sits there on the turret, he's not gonna push you, and if you're not gonna push him, you're kinda at a stalemate. So that never really works out. At that point, you usually wanna toss your, uh, hologram out and distract him while you can just shoot him up. It's usually pretty simple. But if it's a swarm, then you want to stay in your base because the swarm will not cause too much damage to your uh, barricades or machine guns and you can take it out pretty easily. But if it's a warden or the uh, the other big guy, I forgot. This is the tentacle monster. Well, I mean, I call it the hentai monster, but... Okay, but either way. So if it's a tentacle monster, warden, or the other one, essentially anything that's not the swarm or the or the stationary boss, you don't really want to sit in your base at the start because he usually charges you like some of them can jump in there and instantly destroy your stuff and it can run you up thousands of uh, power to repair those, which is honestly not worth it. You usually want to lure him away from your base or in front of your base, so the sentry gun can get a couple shots off on it, but it's not always worth it. It's usually better to just have your, have like maybe one person in the base just to attract the uh, smaller AIs into the MG fire so they don't bother the rest of your team while taking out the boss. And then once the boss is defeated, you can go back into your base and then have the uh, barbs and sentries take out the rest of the fodder. So what what is the priority build list for what you want to build first versus what <laughs> this is what you want to build the last? I don't know where I get that accent. I guess it kind of happens. But so the first thing you want to build is definitely a barricade because you can get that off in round one, assuming that everyone wants to help you out, which usually on higher difficulties that does actually get done. So definitely you want a barricade. First, you want to barricade either all the openings into your bunker. Like, usually, if you pick a good strategic location, there's only two ways into your bunker. Usually, like, a front and a back or a, a front uh, entrance or a side entrance. You usually want to get two barricades down. They can still be level one. Just get two barricades down, covering both of those, and then you can start placing uh, sentry guns. Sentry guns are uh, they're pretty efficient at taking out the uh, jumpers that explode onto you but they will run out of ammo pretty quickly. And another tip with the sentry guns is that you can actually, a good spot to place a sentry gun is somewhere right by cover because you can sit in cover and then hit fire the welder and you can actually repair your sentry gun without leaving cover so it can soak up bullets for you and while it takes out the enemies, which I've done in a number of situations regarding higher difficulties. Although as of this recording, well, as of my actual footage, I'm recording... It doesn't matter what I'm recording. Whatever. Anyway. Yeah, so keep it by cover so you can repair it. And it will... And uh, you will uh, not be dead. So, another... Another uh, little strategy that we do with uh, barbs and sentries is that um, you can put uh, multiple layers of barbed wire in front of the sentries and then maybe one layer of barbed wire behind the sentries if you're having a problem with enemies jumping over the uh, sentries, like the uh, pouncers can get past the sentry. But you can also put a barb behind the sentry to prevent any like straggler enemies that somehow got behind the sentry because the sentry can't spin around 180 degrees. They'll just sit there and get attacked. But while it's getting attacked, it's a really good time for someone with a lancer to just melee them down and get some pretty easy kills. Also, this mode is, uh, they teach you it in the uh, campaign mode, but I'm not sure if, I'm not sure how many people actually use it in multiplayer, but if you press the left bumper on the controller, well, it is for Xbox, I, I don't know about PC or PS4, I know that they have it, but I'm not, just not sure what button it is, is that um, you actually, you actually can enter a uh, more tactical view, and it'll display every area or location that your sentry can, that your sentry is currently covering, with a uh, slighter, slightly uh, blue hue to it, like he, you can, it's pretty obvious to tell. 
but it'll also show like if you get turned around on a map that you don't play on very much press lb and it'll show you where the fabricator is and all your teammates and their health so also if you're playing as jack that's also really helpful for the teammates that are lower health you can actually uh go fly on over to them while holding down lb and you know uh who's who and what's what and where's where After you've built your sentries and barbs, the question is, do you upgrade the barbs, do you upgrade the sentries, or do you buy a weapons locker? The answer to that is you want to buy a weapons locker. Personally, I think the weapons locker is very helpful on boss waves. This is also going off of boss waves too, I suppose. But um, boss waves, Boss waves can pass by very quickly, aka you light up the boss and he dies like in two seconds. If you use the weapons locker properly. So the weapons locker is not for that one guy who's, you know, shooting everything and just put his primary weapon on while he, he like, you know, he sticks his primary weapon on there. It's not meant for small, small arms unless you have an extra slot available and you're actually running low. But the best thing to do is when you take out one of the uh, larger enemies carrying a mulcher, a tri-shot, or a missile launcher, or a mulcher, or any large two-handed weapon, after you used it up, and it's got like a couple shots left, like a tri-shot, you can stick it right on the weapons locker, and it'll actually refill the ammo, and it'll stay there. It won't disappear after the wave. And you can pick it up as soon as the next boss wave comes, or whenever a bunch of large enemies show up, you can just have a bunch of heavy weapons sitting inside your base that you can just pick up and they have full ammo. You can just light them up and then put them back on the locker for the next time. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I actually had a lot of trouble recording this audio as I had actually had to record it on my Xbox. I actually had to stream twice because I actually am streaming right now to record my audio just for this, because for some reason my PC is just picking up static, I don't know. But either way, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope more people will start trading the engineer some weapons until they allow the engineer to actually buy, or any character to buy any weapon, which I hope they do. But until then, I hope this, I hope this helps you in your future endeavors.